What up everyone, today I'll be reviewing the New Balance 880 version 10. What's up everyone, Jeremy Try here. Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to my very first running shoe review. Today with me, I'll be reviewing the New Balance 880 version 10. If you're new to this channel, I give beginner triathlon tips and just document my swim, bike, run, training, and triathlon racing adventures. So if you're into any of that, consider subscribing. All right, so let's start with the basics. So this is a neutral shoe. And for those who might not know, New Balance has this numbering system to their shoes where the last two digits of the model number denotes what kind of running shoe it is. So the 80 in this shoe denotes that this is a neutral shoe. As for the weight for a women's size eight, it's coming in at 8.9 ounces. And for a men's nine and a half, it'll be about 10.7 ounces. For me, I wear a 10 and a half, so it's probably gonna be a little over 11 ounces. Definitely not your lightweight shoe. The shoe has a 10 millimeter drop or heel toe offset. And for those who might not know, the drop in a shoe is pretty much the difference in where your heel sits in the shoe to where your forefoot sits in the shoe. This is important because shoes with a higher drop generally support uh, forefoot striking and have more cushion, whereas shoes with a lower drop support more of a midfoot to forefoot strike and generally have less cushioning. As for the price, this is currently going for $129.99 on the New Balance website. Full disclosure, I bought this with my own money at my local running shop. All right, so before I jump into all the different parts of the shoe, I wanna start with the looks. I think this is a very solid, all around good looking shoe. I mean, I love the black and white color scheme. It's not plain old boring black and white. It does have some New Balance flair to it. I mean, it has this nice, these nice design patterns from the Hypoknit mesh upper. It has these nice Voronoi patterns or honeycomb patterns on that Fresh Foam X midsole. So. It has some flair to it, it's not boring, um, but it's also, it doesn't have any like bright colors. I'm a big fan of shoes that I can wear not only for running, but to go out to like do errands, to go grocery shopping. I can definitely see myself wearing these with a pair of khaki shorts and like a v-neck to go to a brewery. Oh yeah, wearing a mask too, of course. So two thumbs up on the shoe for looks. All right, so moving to the midsole of the shoe, we have that brand new Fresh Foam X technology, Fresh Foam X right there. In previous iterations of the Fresh Foam technology, they used more of the honeycomb designs on the midsole, on the outer portion of the midsole over here. But as you can see, they're using these Voronoi patterns. And these Voronoi patterns are found in nature and like giraffe's fur or a dragonfly's wings. But what that means for us runners is that this is going to be cushioned and responsive, yet still light and durable. Moving to the outsole. So I read on the New Balance website that the outsole is made out of blown rubber. I had no idea what the heck that meant, but pretty much blown rubber is air injected rubber that's lighter and more flexible than regular rubber. Works for me. Also on the outsole, we have these hex patterns. The larger hex patterns mean that this is where we generally experience more pressure when we run, and the smaller patterns are where we experience less pressure when we run. Moving to the upper, I mean, we gotta talk about this heel counter right here. This can knock somebody out. Your heel is going to be nice and protected with this heel counter in addition to the nice plush heel collar over here. Plenty of cushion. Moving to the tongue, the tongue actually has a lot of cushion as well. It kind of reminds me of that basketball shoe that had like a pump over here, like <laughs> The laces feel pretty solid as well. I'd say there's even a little bit of cushion on the laces. Cushion everywhere in this shoe. Moving to the front of the upper, we have the Hypo-Knit mesh as well. Supposedly the Hypo-Knit mesh upper was engineered to provide different areas of flexibility and stretch and comfort. 
Uh, it does feel of like very solid construction. It definitely feels like this is a high quality shoe that's built to last. All right, so moving to the fit of the shoe, I think you already know what I felt when I first put it on. I felt that cushion. Cushion all around the entire shoe, especially over here in the heel area. I mean, it almost felt like the embrace of a loved one. It's just when your foot slides in there, it's just nice and inviting. My heel felt nice and snug with all of this plushness over here. At the midfoot, the laces cinched down really nicely and just gave me a good, solid feel over here. Not too tight, not too constricting over here at the midfoot. And as for the toe box, my foot runs a little wide, but I had enough room over here on the big toe, um, enough room for like swelling when I run, and my pinky toe kind of just rested right over here in this area but um, no issues with fit. I'd say that this shoe fits true to size. So after 30 miles in the shoe, all the runs have been easy runs with a little bit of tempo runs sprinkled in there. I have no complaints. This is my current daily trainer. It's very, very comfortable. I love all the cushion. It's just a solid, dependable, everyday running shoe. And I can tell that this is gonna last me a very, very long time. This is not for those who want a shoe that's super light or for speed days at 10.7 or for me, 11 ounces. This is definitely not lightweight. I would prefer something that's more light um, with a little less heel toe drop offset, but you can use this for speed days. I mean, you can use this for speed days, 5Ks all the way up to marathon. But if you're looking solely for a lightweight or speed day shoe, this is not for you. So this is for someone who wants a lot of heel protection for someone who wants a lot of cushion in the shoe. This is also for someone who wants to, say, save a lot of money. If you wanna just buy one running shoe, this can be that one running shoe for you. Um, you mean, you can use it all the way up to the marathon, you can use it for your speed days, and it's just solid. It'll be there for you every single day, and you don't have to worry about like durability because this shoe is built to last. I'd also say that this is a great shoe for light travel. If you were to go on a two-week backpacking trip to Europe and were to just bring one shoe, I would bring this shoe. I mean, it, it looks great. It doesn't have many bright colors, so it's not gonna draw much attention to yourself. It has that 10 millimeter heel toe drop, so your heel is gonna be sitting nice and comfortable back here, perfect for all day walking around the city. And if you're like me, who likes to get up really early in the mornings, if you're not hungover, while your friends are still sleeping in the hostel or your family's in the hotel still getting up, this can be your shoe to go on those 6 a.m., 7 a.m. morning runs while everyone else is sleeping to explore that city that you're in. So this is just a great all-round running shoe that you can use for all kinds of running. The only con I would say would be its weight, but I wouldn't even say that's a con because with the weight, you get a lot of cushion on the shoe and a lot of comfort, so it's not even really a drawback for me. So that's all I had for the New Balance 880 V10. I really hope you enjoyed my first running shoe review. Comment down below what you think of this shoe. I'd really be interested to know your thoughts, and if you like this video, please go ahead and throw a thumbs up down there with the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more running shoe reviews like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.